My topic is about the philosophy of technology of Nishida. The title of my presentation is Technology as a Creative Character of Basho. Because of the constraint of time, I just read through my text I prepared. First, introduction. Nishida's concept of Basho was originally formulated in the context of a theory of knowledge. It was considered to be a most basic framework from which every conceivable factors emerge and which was characterized as a place of absolute nothing, in which everything conceivable is subsumed. The concept of Basho was later formulated with a more concrete concept of historical world in which subject and object or human and non-human factors relate with each other in a dynamic and contradictory way, and where poiesis or creative activities play a central role. According to Nishida, poiesis is a species of techne, and the world of poiesis is a world of homo fever. In this context, Nishida characterized the creative nature of the historical world as technological. So, <laughs> <laughs> How can we understand the relation between the place of nothing and the historical world, which is characterized as technological? The technology and its character of creativity have an essential relation to nothingness or a function of negation. To understand the relation uh, between technology and nothingness, in the following this presentation, I focus on uh, the characteristics of technology which Nishida expressed with the phrase from that which is made to that which makes. Skurareta mono kara tsukuru mono e. According to this view, not a, big, not a maker or a producer, but what is made plays a fundamental role in the process of production. This means the role of makers or producers must be once negated in the process of creative productions. Through these discussions, I hope I can show that Nishida's view of technolog technology implicates an alternative to the traditional view in which producers is given a central role, and it also gives us an important clue for understanding various problems related to the development of modern technological civilization, such as climate change and pandemic. My presentation consists of three EE points. First, from that which is made to that which makes about this theme, uh, in uh, the previous presentations in the morning, many things were dis already discussed, but I uh, tried to formulate it. And uh, following two topics uh, are related to this uh, main theme. From that which is made to that uh, which makes, I begin with a citation of Nishida. The historical world is a world of production and a world of creation creation. Production means that we make things. However, while things are made by us, they become entirely independent and move us in the opposite way. In addition, the acts of uh, making things themselves originate from the world of things. While things and we remain opposite and contradictory, things moves us, move us and we move things. And through this process, the world creates itself as a contradictory self-identity. From that which is made to that which makes, the world moves through acting intuitions. We are able to make things because we are productive elements in the productive world and creative elements in the creative world." End of quote. 
when it comes to the process of producing something, we tend to think of a producer as a starting point. In contrast, Nishida claimed that not the producer, but what is produced must be presupposed as a starting point. According to Nishida, whatever is concerned, when it can never be characterized as a mate, neither can it be characterized as the making. The process of making does not begin with that which makes, but with that which is made. In other words, in the creative process of the historical world, there is no beginning that is understood in the ultimate sense, neither is there a creator who begins the production from nothing. On the other hand, one might think that the starting point of production is the purpose that leads the process of production. According to this view, the teleological structure is to be considered the character of productive activities. However, if we follow the expression of Nishida, even if the purpose is realized and something is made, we cannot think that the process of production ultimately stops there, because it's always the case that from that which is made begins the process of making. As to the end of the process of production, we cannot think of an ultimate final point, neither can we think of a producer who is entitled to uh, uh, determine what is the uh, uh, end of the pro process. The creative process has neither a beginning nor an end. There is no producer who determines the uh, beginning or the end of the process of production. These are Nishida's characteristic view of technology and the ultimate reality. The fact that the historical world has neither the beginning nor an end means that there is nothing that moves it from outside. Therefore, in this world, uh, uh, therefore, this world moves by itself. What makes uh, this self-movement uh, possible is the contradictory relation between various factors in it and the relation between each factor and the whole of the world. The creative process has neither a beginning nor an end. There is no producer who determines the beginning or the end of the process of production. These are Nishida's characteristic view of technology and the ultimate reality. The fact that the historical world has neither a beginning nor an end means that there is nothing that moves it from outside. Therefore, this world moves by itself. What makes this self-movement possible is the contradictory relation between various factors in it and the re relation between each factor and the whole of the world. Uh, the manage, I managed to control the uh, it's very complicated. It seems to be complicated. Can you hear the, this Donna? <laughs> Today in Tokyo, the, the weather is very bad. Uh, to see the world technologically means that we ourselves enter into the world and see the world. I explicate the implication of this uh, thesis in the following way. Second, the designer fallacy. Uh, this is the word uh, which stems from uh, the philosopher Don ID. The traditional view of the design process is new, uh, is now criticized by various philosophers. For example, Don Aidi, one of uh, leading American philosophers, characterizes the traditional view as the designer fallacy, claiming the design processes, process operates in very different ways, ways which imply a much more compl complex set of interrelations between any designer, the materials which make the technology possible, and the uses to which any technologies may be put. Uh, there's also another example from a uh, French philosopher, Bruno Latour. I quote, the inventor of post-it, 
a yellow sticky paper for marking books, which has now become so widely used, makes the point very well. Having found a glue that did not adhere was seen as a failure in a 3M company, whose job is usually to make very sticky glues. This failure turned to advantage when the inventor realized that it could mark Thumb's books without smearing and wearing them. The story does not end here because uh, people belonging to the uh, marketing department thought that this invention had no market and no future. The inventor distributed prototypes of this invention to all the secretaries in the company and succeeded in acquiring an excellent reputation, which was directly transmitted to the uh, marketing department. Only through these ingenious tactics could the inventor make the marketing department change its original estimation and sell the new art facts, which it had not wanted to uh, 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 sell. Uh, I uh, try to re-describe this story with uh, Nishida's terminologies. First, a newly invented glue, which was at first seemed to be a failure, began to show a new expressive Hyogen-teki character to an inventor who wanted to mark Sam's books without smearing and wearing them, and motivated him to use it in a new context. This process can be characterized as a process of the negation of the first context in which an invented product was estimated as a failure and uh, the emergence of the new context in which the product began to have a positive evaluation. Nishida uh, characterized the process in which an action is brought about by expressive things as acting intuition. Second, what is especially conspicuous in this case is that the process of finding the new way of using a product is nothing but the process of making a new type of artifact. Nishida emphasized that the negation of things through acting intuition is not a negation for its sake, but that the negation is necessarily an affirmation. In other words, consumption is already nothing but production. What is remarkable is that Nishida described these characteristics in a very impressive and idiosyncratic way. For example, he said, the things that are formulated through expressive actions have the function of production by consuming themselves and negating themselves. This is a process of being born through dying. In this context, Nishida emphasized the temporal or historical character of our creative action, which includes necessary a function of negation. According to Nishida, in order to create a new type of thing, the original designer's intent and the intended thing must disappear into the past or must die in this process. To make things work, human factors must negate themselves and die once to make things work. I think no one has ever expressed criticism of the designer fallacy with such impressive words as Nishida has done here. The last part, uh, technology and environment. According to the traditional view of technology, it's considered to be necessary for technologists to keep a distance from the world and take an objective stance toward it in order to make new artifacts and solve problems appropriately. In this case, it's clear that humans are considered to be located outside of nature upon which they act and in which they interfere. According to Nishida, this way of characterizing technology, which has been dominant in modern thought, not only misses the mark, but understands the, the essence of technology totally from the opposite direction. Nishida repeatedly emphasized that nature is also included in the historical world and is inseparably related to us as human beings. This means nature must 
be considered not as an object, but as an environment in which we are working and in which we act upon it. And the relation between us and the natural environment is characterized as contradictory as well as interactive. According to Nishida, technology is always embedded in a certain environment so that when we are engaged in producing things, we inevitably change the environment and the environment changes us in the opposite way. Action is inevitably followed by reaction. The more powerful creative technologies are, the more powerful the reactions are. When we consider the contemporary situation in which we live, it's clear that we are beginning to feel the reactions of the whole globe, even in our everyday lives. For example, almost every year, we experience abnormal weather, and we cannot but feel the influence of the climate change or global warming. That means we cannot but admit that the whole globe is play, uh, playing an important role as an influential actor in our historical world. Scientists are now beginning to talk about a new geological age called Anthropocene. Perhaps we can add the pandemic we are now globally experiencing as another typical example of this situation. If we consider uh, these circumstances in our contemporary age, we cannot but confirm that Nishida's philosophical thesis are beginning to have an actual meaning, because it seems now already natural to think that our historical world has a self-negating character of a contradictory self-identity, and that our world of everyday life remains a world of true crisis, however highly our technologies might develop. Thank you very much for your attention.